So if you check this execution plan, this execution, for example, let's assume you have two separate systems. This is a production system. Uh, this mm -hmm. is UAD system, right? And where you're getting good performance and you have another system that is your production system. The same SQL runs on your production system too, with same mm -hmm. set of bind variables and everything. So the the system is exact replica of each other. It's, on, it's only the case like the criticality. I mean, the other one is the pure production system and the current one where the query is behaving good is your UAD system or any any lower environment, set UAD, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to get, and for example, the same SQL is taking 15 minutes there and now in uh, here in this system in this lower environment in you add system let's assume it's taking hardly 10 seconds to complete mm -hmm. right and you do not see any uh, you know any method or a way how you can improve the performance of the sql because there is a huge difference of the elapsed time between your lower system and the production right production may later 15 minutes and now here in this you add it's taking hardly 10 seconds so what you can do scroll down go to outline data section mm -hmm. yeah OK, stop. Now if you check the outline data includes everything that was used by the optimizer here in this UAT environment where the query is performing good. Now mm -hmm. it's it actually contain everything. It has the, the third last outline data. If you if you check NLJ underscore batching. Nested loop join batching has happened and then it's actually asking optimizer to use nested loop use underscore NL. And then leading is basically is a is a way how it the it recognizes the leading column or the leading edge of the index, right? Yeah. And then it's asking for full table, um, full table scan, right? And then and again an index scan, a full table scan, some outline and merge specific information. This is basically a kind of a minimal hint that was produced by the optimizer here in the environment where the query was performing good. So for example, if you want to have the same uh, execution, I mean uh, same elapsed time or uh, I want to replicate there in production too, where the query is slow. What you can do, copy everything that is there in the outline. Mm. Copy everything, right? Mm. And use exactly after your select statement. So what is your select statement or your SQL statement? Can you go up? Okay, yes, I select. Well. Yeah, after select, paste everything and then asterisk and then rest of your SQL statement and you will you will be all OK. Just copy everything. Now try to execute same SQL in production and you will get same elapsed time. Most, I mean 99% you will get, uh, you know, the same elapsed time there. Oh. Okay, so this is also one of the approach what you can do if nothing is working for you and things are getting really complicated and it's really critical for you to fix this issue as soon as possible. So what you can do, just kind of a band-aid fix, what you can suggest, copy outline data from the system where the SQL is working good because mm. If the systems are replica with each other and SQL is exactly the same, so you will get exact SQL ID, right? So mm -hmm. that is why copy the outline data, paste it after your select, update, or insert whichever statement which is taking time. And then if you if you will carefully observe, you will get same uh, performance in in the, in the system where it was earlier uh, behaving slow. Okay. So, so uh, we can use also means uh, when we run this in production with this hint, it yeah. will create a new plan and we can pin that plan uh, later with that. You can, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. But there is a problem and there is a catch. What, for example, assume a situation like when this query is, is a prepared statement. It's not an ad hoc statement. It's coming from the application, directly yeah. from the application. So you cannot... Uh, uh, paste a hint there in within the application code, right? Every time be, because it comes up with a new SQL, right? So you cannot modify or add anything there uh, into the SQL which is coming from the application. So what you can do in that case, there is a concept called a SQL patching, SQL patch. So basically what happens is um, like in case when you have prepared statements and you have uh, queries which are prepared or are coming directly from the application and have you had no you have no control in order to edit it because those are not ad hoc queries right because customers have doing some changes at their end within the application that comes and then it becomes a SQL statement and then comes and hits into your database right so you do not have any control in that scenario so what you can do you you can go and create a SQL patch for it so once you create a SQL patch then uh, ev every time when you have similar SQLs coming from the application and hitting the DB, the same set of hints will be reused. Okay. So I have to create the SQL patch here in UAT yes. environment and then that uh, copy need, uh, copy to production. I mean, UAT and production was just, you know, just, just a, um, 
just a just an example what I actually use. I mean, wherever you want to fix a performance of any prepared statement which is coming from application, you did some modification. For example, you added an a parallel hint to your select statement in order to improve its performance, right? But mm -hmm. unfortunately, that that SQL is part of the application workload. It's that's that uh, that was not executed directly by uh, onto the database, right? So that is. It always comes from the application, so you have no control, right? It's not possible to edit any uh, anyhow, right? Until unless application team goes and you know add that uh, that hint permanently into their code. But if mm -hmm. that not that easy and that requires a lot of approvals and everything, what you can do, you can create a SQL patch in your database in order to stabilize, in order to uh, uh, get a static performance of that a better performance. Like if you did everything, like you have finally you observed and you noticed, like the moment I add parallel hint to the SQL. Uh, the elapse time reduced by 80%, right? But mm -hmm. the SQL is part of the application workload. I mean, it's coming directly from the application through the middleware, JBoss or whatever, or WebLogic. So what you can do, you can create a, uh, a SQL patch with, for that specific SQL ID with that parallel hint into your database, and that's it. You're all good. Okay. All right, so outline data that that is why it's really important you to understand. But yeah, there are some really obscure and strange thing what you notice in outline data. It's not that easy to understand. Like uh, if you take a look like NLJ underscore batching. So NLJ is basically nested loop join. If you check the execution plan, nested loop was there, right? So it's basically a method how it actually forces the uh, the optimizer forces um, uh, the the query uh, to use the nested loop and batch it. OK, mm -hmm. this is the uh, this is one of the thing that we just discussed this morning, right? Like what are the other SQL optimization techniques? So one of the method is to use outlines, right? So outline data we just saw when when once you have the execution plan for your SQL in an advanced format, so you've got outline data, all the, those hints that were used by the optimizer. So this is one of the use case live. Uh, real time experience basically I have. So uh, in SIT, this the query was taking somewhere around 500 seconds and the same SQL on a same set of uh, data in the dev environment took 20 seconds and in the pre SIT environment it hardly taking few seconds, five seconds to be precise. It, it was taking there in the SIT environment, in the pre SIT environment, but in the SIT it was taking 500 seconds. So what we did, we basically generated the advanced level of execution plan, copied the outline data from the better performing environment. Like in preset, it, it took only five seconds, right? So we copied the outline data from that environment and then we tried with that select statement in the sit environment where it earlier taking 500 seconds. So this that's how after select, then paste everything that you have copied from the outline data from a good system, right? And then do rest of the statement, right? And you're all good and we are able to uh, mimic or copy the same performance and the same behavior here in the pre uh, in the sit environment as well. So it started taking close to five hundred five or six seconds in in the sit environment to after this change. OK. Any question? Um, no, sir. I can also do the same query, whatever I have shown you earlier. No? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of uh, things now in your hand what you can do. First of all, try to execute it on the production. If the same SQL is good over there and if yes, then what is the difference in the performance statistics or the object level statistics? Is there something extra there or not? Right. And second is check the wait event specific information like on what event it frequently comes and waits and what is the using uh, you can use ash report or ash data and if not then you can also use a sql uh, real time sql monitoring as well right so it which will provide you same set of information and uh, a lot of things what you can do and you can also go and try using the outline data as well okay so <clears throat> you